In this video, we're going to take a look at Bohr's atomic model and how line spectra provide evidence for this atomic model and how it all kind of fits together. So we know from Bohr's atomic model that we have a positively charged nucleus and then we have electrons that are depicted as being in fixed orbits or energy levels. Each kind of electron has a specific fixed amount of energy as it orbits around the nucleus. And the electrons that are further from the nucleus have more energy than electrons closer to the nucleus. So these are kind of all like the pieces of the Bohr's atomic model. In our last video where we looked at some of these line spectra and where they're kind of coming from, I did mention that electrons within an element, when they're excited by heat or energy, the electrons can absorb energy and eventually they'll emit it as a photon of light. So really what I want to do here is kind of explain what I mean by that and where things are coming from. So if we kind of take an electron here, and I've depicted one here just in this first energy level, or we could say at n equals 1, and I've got written here that it's at the ground state. So really what I mean is that when uh, an electron is in its ground state, it means that it's in its lowest kind of possible energy level, or where it wants to exist and where it's the most stable. Um, now we know that from Bohr's model, electrons can't exist anywhere between these orbits and um, that they kind of have to be within a particular orbit. And then each of those sort of energy levels is going to have an energy associated with it. Um, one other thing we kind of need to talk about, maybe what we'll do first is look at, okay, well, what if we excite this electron? So let's say we have a red photon of light that's going to excite this electron. If you remember, red is on the low energy end of the spectrum. So I like writing NRG as for energy, just as kind of a short form. But say this is enough energy to excite this electron. And when the electron gets excited, it can jump up to a higher energy level. And so what that's going to do is it's going to result in this electron that's jumped up to a higher energy level. And when it's jumped up, we say it's in the excited state. So an excited state electron is an electron that has absorbed a photon of energy. Depending on how much energy is associated with that photon, it can jump up just one level. It can actually jump up two or three or more. Um, but it needs to be, enough, be given enough energy to be able to jump up to that higher energy level. So this one we're depicting has jumped up equal to our second energy level here. Now, this is very unstable. And so electrons do not want to be in this configuration. And they are going to quickly return back to their ground state. Now, when they return to their ground state, they release energy. And so this transition here, if we're jumping down the same amount from the n equals 2 to the n equals 1 energy level, it's going to give off a photon of light. And that photon of light is going to be associated with a particular color because this is associated with a particular amount of energy. And so this transition is quite small, so maybe it's just giving off a red photon of light. So this might be where we're getting our line spectrums from. Now, let's kind of take a look at a second example. If we have our electron again in our first energy level, now we shine a photon of purple light or violet light onto this electron that is much higher energy. And so if we were to do this, that electron would absorb the energy and maybe it's enough to bump it up from n equals one to the n equals three energy level. And so when it's up there, again, it's in its excited state, pretty unstable, so it's going to drop back down to its ground state fairly quickly. And when it does that, it's going to give off a photon of violet light. So this photon is a much higher energy photon and uh, is giving rise to 
a line within the line spectra that would have the purple color. So we can actually reason this out with hydrogen's emission spectrum and relate it to all of the different transitions that are happening and where the lines are coming from. So if you remember from what I just said, down at the red end here, these are probably low, or these are definitely low energy transitions. Whereas the ones at the red, uh, violet end of the spectrum are high energy transitions. Now, in terms of where these are going from energy levels, anything that we can see with line spectra, are transitions that are happening back down to the n equals 2 level. So for the red line, that's actually a transition that's happening from n equals 3 back down to n equals 2. Or showing it on this diagram here, you can see it going from 3 to 2. For the green one, it's a little bit higher energy, so it's a bigger jump. It's going from n equals 4 to n equals 2. Uh, so shown on the diagram here, you can see it going from 4 to 2, and so on. So blue is going from 5 to 2, and then the violet one's going from 6 to 2. It's the biggest transition. Now, emission spectra are always transitions from high down back down to low energy. And so these are emitting photons of light. The absorption spectrum is resulting from the absorption of light. So it's going from the absorption of light going from n equals 2 to n equals 3, or n equals 2 to n equals 4, and so on and so forth. So essentially this diagram is reversed here, and then your spectrum shows up as essentially the negative of this particular uh, line spectra here. So you might be kind of wondering, okay, like these are transitions back down to n equals 2, but doesn't hydrogen have its electron at n equals 1? It does. And what sort of happens when you have all of this hydrogen in, say, a gas discharge tube and you're applying a high voltage to it? You are exciting lots of electrons in lots of different atoms across the board. And what results is you get tons of different transitions between the different energy levels. Um, you can have transitions back down to the n equals 1 level, but you can't actually see that in the visible spectrum. This is happening in the UV end of the spectra because these sort of changes here are much higher, um, bigger transitions. So they are higher energy. So they are below the violet end of the spectrum. Okay, so very, very high energy transitions. The set of transitions we see are the ones that go back to n equals two, and these are the ones that happen in the visible spectrum. Um, there is a series that goes back down to only n equals three. They happen in the IR end of the electromagnetic spectrum. And again, we can't see those with the naked eye. So we can only see the transitions that happen in the visible range, but they are paralleled in both the UV range and the IR range within the electromagnetic spectrum. So essentially all of these Transitions are happening all at once, all sorted together because you have tons and tons of atoms of hydrogen existing. And what you sort of see in that line spectra is just the visible portion. And this is an average of all of the different transitions that are happening all together. One other point that we do kind of need to talk about quickly here, and we will revisit later in another video, is something called the convergence limit. Now, if you kind of notice this visual here on this side of the right side here, you'll notice that the difference between n equals one to n equals two is quite big. And then from two to three, it gets smaller. Three to four gets even smaller, four to five even smaller. And it gets smaller and smaller and smaller um, as you get further away from the nucleus. So what happens with these transitions and with this line spectra is that as you get further and further away from the nucleus, the lines will get closer and closer together.
and that's because there's very little difference at this sort of point. Eventually we hit a point that's called the convergence limit. And this is where all the lines are going to meet, they're going to merge, they're going to form a continuous spectrum. And what this means is that at this point, the electron can have any energy. Um, it doesn't have now discrete energy. So really what that's giving us evidence for is ionization. At this point, the electron is free from the atom, so it can take on whatever energy value um, from that point on, and ionization has occurred. So we will revisit this concept. I just wanted to bring it up now, though, so that uh, we got a little sneak peek of it. That's it then for this video. Let's move on to our next task.